Subway engages in overseas, particularly in Korean dramas, where every plot point seems to occur at a subway. Here is two characters having a meeting at one. Here is a group of men celebrating the fact their friends just woke up from a coma. <laughs> there there is this scene I'm going to South Korea. Let's look into this. Subway has done a significant amount of product placement. I'm talking, of course, about Korean sandwich straws. Subway in South Korea. I did not come to Seoul, South Korea to talk about Subway sandwiches. I am here for a different story, one that really focuses on this city that is 40 kilometers from the border with North Korea. But I was in the Istanbul airport on a layover on my way to South Korea, and I watched that John Oliver clip and started to go down a rabbit hole. Subway shows up a lot in Korean dramas. Not just like one or two, but like five, 10, 15, almost 20 different shows have product placement from Subway sandwiches. The American fast food chain that is apparently the largest fast food chain in the world by store locations. What? What is going on here? Subway is not cool. It is not good. And yet K-dramas are full of Subway. Mm. We gotta get to the bottom of this. Is there something special about Korean Subway? Like, is it different? Or am I missing something? Is there something better about Korean Subway versus American Subway? Because if there is, I want to know about it. So first, let's settle that. Fresh. I'll do mozzarella, hot chili, salt and pepper. Thank you. Fresh? Okay, um, after that very scientific study, which by the way was a little bit scientific because I did choose the specialty items that only exist in Korea and not in America, and I chose something that had beef in it, which is a thing that Korea does really well. So I tried to give South Korea the best chance of being differentiated, and the result is that it is kind of better, kind of. Eat fresh? Eat fresh? Eat fresh. That's my man. But not really. It's like still just microwaves and like mass produced industrial ingredients prepared in front of you. They kind of taste old and stale, but kind of delicious at the same time. I don't know. But the thing I noticed at this location and several others that I've visited in my short time here in Seoul is that these subways look and feel different. Cleaner, more sleek, well lit. So yeah, I guess you could say that Subway sandwiches taste better when you're eating them here instead of here. Okay, this is not what this video is about. It's not about whether or not Korean Subway is better than American Subway. You can decide that. I'm interested in how Subway sandwiches has taken over Korean dramas. There is an explanation for this. I talked to an expert in this topic who's like the guy to explain it. He's a communications and media professor at one of the best universities in Korea, and he has thoughts on this. But first, I have to do the thing that allows me to make these videos, which is tell you about the sponsor of today's video. So let's go back to Washington DC for a few moments and thank today's sponsor. Here we are back in Washington DC doing an ad read, but unlike Subway in K-dramas, I'm actually putting a break between the video and this ad read. That's the difference. All media has to make money somehow. I just am doing it by putting a wall between the story and the ad. So thank you NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. A VPN is a tool that I use pretty often, especially lately as I've been traveling. Being in Korea, my computer's been freaking out as I try to log into things. And so to solve that, I log onto NordVPN and I connect to the internet via the United States. And this isn't some like coding, like nerd thing. This is like press one button and you're now connected via the United States. And now I can log onto Gmail and Gmail is just fine with it and no one freaks out and we're good. A VPN also allows you to watch stuff that like isn't maybe available in your country, but you just like connect via the UK and suddenly you're watching like Netflix UK. It's pretty cool. NordVPN is also expanding to become a threat protection tool. It's a tool that allows you to block malicious trackers, malware, and when you're like sitting on public Wi-Fi in a cafe and you're not super secure, it totally gives you a buffer of security that to me just gives me a little peace of mind. And right now they're having a 30 day money back guarantee if you sign up. So really you have nothing to lose. You can try this out and see if it works. There's a link in my description. It's nordvpn.com slash Johnny Harris. 
When you click that link, it helps support this channel. So go do us both a favor, click the link, and you also will get in on an exclusive deal. Four months of free NordVPN to try it out for four months. Thank you NordVPN for supporting this channel. Back to Korea to figure out what's going on with K-drama and Subway. You know, maybe I should have done that ad as a product placement. No, I wouldn't do that. You'd probably be very angry if I did, if I like, slipped it into this video. Subway can understand for that. And frankly, Rick, I, I'm surprised you did. Instead, there was an ad break, there was a little commercial, and now we're back to the show. That is a very normal model for a lot of media around the world, but not in Korea. Turns out that South Korea has a very different culture surrounding advertising and media. And by very different, I mean, they haven't ever allowed there to be commercial breaks. No commercials. You're watching a TV show on the television, which most of you don't do anymore, but like forever, that's the way it's been. And then there's a commercial break. Like that is a very normal thing. We're all very used to it. In South Korea, that has not been allowed. It's been against the law. It's been completely regulated against. <laughs> In Korea, they're obsessed with this idea of viewership rights. It's a very aggressive set of regulations that don't let advertisers put commercials in shows. Spoiler alert, that's slightly changing. But for years, that has always been the case. Okay, but then a few things start to happen. These broadcasters, these TV channels really started to struggle because people were moving away from TV. And this really threatened the shows that were being made because now they wouldn't have budget. Korean dramas were starting to see popularity and get viewers all over the world. The Korean government saw an opportunity to change their advertising rules to let advertisers put Korean goods and products into the shows to advertise but like as a part of the story not like in a commercial that's like in the middle of the show but like to bake in a product to the story which is called product placement and so in 2010 they started to ease these restrictions and people go nuts and it got really cringy really fast <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. Every product placement is a gamble. If you make it too obvious, too on the nose, then it can actually create a negative association with your brand and there's backlash. But what it did is it put more money into these shows, bigger budgets, and these shows got better and better and the audiences around the world grew and the product placement got more and more sophisticated. It's just an interesting system in Korea where rather than drama companies approaching advertisers, it's advertisers who approach drama companies. I mean, there's a lot of money in this. <laughs> Do a couple of those and you're making some like pretty good cash to make your show better. At first, it was Korean and Chinese brands, which got a lot of scrutiny. People kind of hated it. Chinese product product placement 되는 건 hate하고 서버에 같이 그 Western brand, American brand가 나오는 거는 acceptable 한 이런 좀 흥미로운. And then a few years ago, Subway, the sandwich maker, decided that they wanted in on this. 음, 좋아 먹는다 먹으면서 깨닫는다. 내 아부가 과했구나. 무슨 일인지도 모르겠어. One thing I love about this city so far is that there are just little nooks and crannies. I'm in the middle of the city and there's this little peaceful like garden space. Look at this. Look at this beautiful. This is just on like, this is like straight in front of Starbucks. Subway's strategy was very bold. They decided they wanted to own this space. They poured tons and tons of money into product placement, into K-dramas, as well as increasing celebrity endorsements, which is another thing that has a lot of marketing power in South Korea. They started to go nuts. They're like, it's time for a brand refresh. Yeah, we know we're getting a lot of flack for our tuna and our bread and all of this in other countries, but here in South Korea, it's a clean slate. We're gonna establish a new brand perception through K-dramas and celebrities. 
and that is exactly what they did. 사람들이 다른 프랜차이즈에 비해서 이건 좀 고급이다라고 이게 다른 나라랑은 좀 완전히 좀 어떻게 보면 다른 거죠. The thing about Subway that makes sense here is that like Subway is a product, but it's also a place, and every show needs a set. It needs a place for things to happen. It could be a nameless cafe or a random restaurant, or it could be a Subway sandwiches. And especially because the regulation made it so that you couldn't like have the actors overtly be like, you should buy Subway. You can like show the space, you can show the brand, you can show them like eating it, but you can't have them like overtly tell people to buy things, which is just fine for Subway because now they could integrate their store and their food into these stories. Excessive number of visits to locations like Subway can be quite jarring. At a certain point, they can ruin the mood or they can become comical because nobody actually wants to eat at Subway that often. Sometimes it's just a matter of like people sitting around having a conversation while they have like beautifully packaged Subway sandwiches, having the logo faced towards the camera. But with time, it started to become more and more intertwined with the actual like storyline. Like this show about a ghost who can't eat anything because he's a ghost, but then this man hands him a Subway sandwich and suddenly he can eat and he's really happy and excited because he was so hungry. I'm not sure how that makes sense in the context of the story or like the rules of this like ghost world, but it made sense for Subway's bottom line and the budget of this production. And the Emmy goes to Subway. Some of these are so on the nose where like the plot point itself is about how delicious the sandwich looks. Like look at her just like staring at that sandwich and she's just like, I want that. And suddenly I'm looking at this and I'm like, I want it too. Like maybe I need to go back to Subway and get another sandwich. Here's a man who's dying. They're trying to revive him with a defibrillator and he goes into a dream state. He's on the fringe of death. And like his last memory is like remembering this date he went on to a Subway sandwiches. He feeds her the sandwich and the soft drink, all with the logo perfectly placed to face the camera. I mean, it's so good. Oh, and guess what? It's absolutely working. One subway executive here in Korea told the New York Times that it is night and day the difference between the before and the after of product placement. Oh, and it's not just for swooning Koreans into loving Subway. Remember how K-dramas are becoming really popular in the United States? Showing these slick Subway shops and delicious looking sandwiches to an American audience via Korean dramas, which are exploding in the States, is this bizarre round trip of brand awareness. And to be honest, it's kind of brilliant. Like it's, I don't know, like I've only been thinking about this for like 36 hours, but like it's kind of working on me too. Like I'm having some renewed interest in like, wait, is Subway cool? Subway, I love you! It's a very different thing than the association I have. And that's what branding is. It's this mental tug of war. This is just like branding 101, and Subway is doing a damn good job at it through Korean dramas. Oh, and it's not just Subway that's classier. Dunkin' Donuts is also super nice in South Korea. I've never seen a Dunkin' Donuts that looks anything other than a dingy, gross place, but the Dunkin' Donuts here looks really nice. I'm gonna go get a donut. Oh. It's been really fascinating for me to see all of these American brands here in South Korea who have been able to like start afresh in this new market to basically build the brand that they wish they would have back in the United States. So yeah, it's working for Subway, but they've also pushed it a little bit too far. There are moments in some of these K-dramas where a guy just like gives someone else a Subway sandwich. It has nothing to do with the story. It's like 
Okay. Product placement for brand new products, especially high tech products that Koreans aren't using yet by characters who in the drama might not actually have the finances to invest in that kind of gadget. Those are particularly annoying to me personally. When you have these lines about how much a character loves the coffee or wants the coffee, so this is instant coffee, people. It's not that amazing. Overall, Subway has come out on top. They've been able to walk the line, kind of balancing between overt product placement that gives them a lot of screen time, while also trying to make it somewhat natural, like not too forced and cringy and like off the plot. And they're getting better and better at this, at like integrating it into the story so that it's not so like awkward. And perhaps most brilliantly, they've done a good job at like kind of making fun of themselves for like this sort of trope of overt product placement. In this little web series they did on YouTube, which is like a little drama, but it was produced by Subway all about Subway. Like the entire plot takes place in a Subway about a Subway employee and there's like a love story with this girl and it has to do with like a, the plant-based sandwich and, and like the steak and cheese sandwich. John Oliver kind of made this sound like this was like a really serious thing, but this was totally tongue-in-cheek satire. Subway knows that this trope is like kind of ridiculous and they're poking fun at themselves, showing some self-awareness that definitely like disarms any critics. But then also people have told me that this show is actually like kind of good like they could see themselves watching all of the episodes it has millions of views like this is funny satire mixed with like real storytelling and subway is at the center of it like come on who is doing this who's in charge of this they're doing a great job congratulations marketing people who are in charge of this it's working Product placement market value. So product placement in K dramas is only gonna get more sophisticated, more a part of the story, and more ubiquitous. Product placement is well made in management management. Such a strange, interesting cycle. But it's happening. There's no going back. I did not come to South Korea to talk about Subway sandwiches. Alas, I am here for a different story that I have been reporting on while here up at the border with North Korea, learning a lot about the realities of the situation here in the Korean Peninsula. Spoiler alert, it's quite a bit different than what we hear on the news in the West, so stay tuned for that. Watch yourself some K-dramas, get yourself some Subway, and you will officially be on the front lines of this weird, disruptive, strange time of globalized media and advertising and food. What is happening? Life is weird. Okay, bye. What's up? I'm not One of my favorite things about the city so far is the little strips of light that are red when you can't walk and green when you can. So cool.